either. My name is Carrie Ann, and these are the Geek Girl Diaries. <laughs> I didn't spend my weekend with the zombie apocalypse. Uh, I was actually at the Mozilla Festival. MozFest is this really cool festival where people from around the world turn up to celebrate everything that is Mozilla. First off, spinny graphics on circular windows. Woo! And of course, Firefox himself, the most famous product of Mozilla probably, Firefox. And the very cool Mozilla air balloon that moved around and took pictures. And there were lots of cool people all sharing ideas, eating lots of weird coloured food and generally hanging out. Lots of talk this year about um, getting kids coding, getting young people creating things rather than being consumers of things and so create, creating apps, creating avatars like this one that you see on the screen, creating computer games, um, creating keyboards out of bananas, a bit odd, using Scratch, everyone's favourite programming basic tool. And here's some of the computer games that people were making whilst we were there. And here's some of the Moz kids, some great kids who recorded and tweeted about, made videos about MozFest playing some computer games. What great young people and inspirational young people they are. So please follow them. And then I got a trip on a boat. Not only did all those wonderful things happen during MozFest, the best thing to happen was to meet some more inspirational women working in technology and Rosie who I'm about to introduce you to is no exception to that she is fantastic um, so I'm Rosie Campbell and I work for BBC Research and Development as a trainee technologist uh, what now well it's kind of quite a broad thing the whole point is they want you to have a wide range of um, technical skills so um, I, was, I did physics at university followed by a masters in computer science um, and they also look for kind of engineering, problem solving and uh, creative thinking, all those kind of skills and um, the point is that over the trainee scheme is two year graduate scheme and we do three eight month placements and the aim is to get kind of a broad covering of all aspects of the broadcast engineering industry. As you can imagine, Rosie sounded like such an interesting person that I got chatting to her for a while so here is the interview I did with her. So my first project was quite web based so I was working with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, making kind of um, a front-end, nice, pretty user interface, but also working with some back-end data um, and, using, and writing PHP code. Uh, my current project is on um, adaptive bitrate streaming, um, and I'm basically trying to improve the fact that when you watch iPlayer and you get the annoying little buffer wheel and everybody hates it, uh, so we're trying to look at how to match the quality of the video we send to the quality of your connection. Wow, that's really, yeah, I hate that. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's annoying. I hate it so much. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> that's great. So, um, the BBC employ people like your graduates straight out of university for yeah. a certain period of time? Yeah, so it's, a, it's just like a normal graduate scheme. It's two years long and then providing you kind of um, perform satisfactorily, you'll be given a permanent job at the end of that. Right, so is that what you, do, you would like to do? Do you want to stay at the BBC and work in broadcasting? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a really fun job. You get to do so many different things um, and it's quite nice knowing that what you're doing is affecting like so many of the public because they're seeing the results of our research. Um, and so I'd be quite happy to stay there. It's a really nice place to work, that everybody's really friendly. Uh, it's nice kind of not to work in such a profit-driven organisation. I think I quite like the public sector. Um, and so yeah, I'd be quite happy to stay stay on for a long time. <laughs> so when you were at school when you were younger, what kind of subjects did you enjoy studying? So I actually quite enjoyed everything and I found it really, really hard to choose my GCSEs and A-levels. Like, I wanted to do art and music and I also wanted to do science and physics and maths and this sort of thing and it was really, really um, frustrating having to narrow it down and I kind of, for the GCSEs I went down the arty route and chose art and music and then I kind of switched and did physics and maths and further maths and English for A-levels. Um, and that was kind of because I realised that I wanted to do physics at university and so obviously you kind of need to have those um, subjects. Yeah, so um, you studied physics at university. What made you go into physics specifically? Um, I think I've always just like been fascinated about the world and the universe and wanted to like understand how it works. Like when I was little, I used to have so such long conversations with my um, with my parents and my family about like black holes and like time travel and all the crazy aspects. Like that that was my favourite kind of physics. It's the kind of the bit that overlaps with philosophy and all like general relativity and quantum physics, all that sort of thing. I, I just thought it was fascinating, and so I wanted to find out more. So when you were doing art and music, 
Did you ever see yourself ending up doing computer science? No, at school I hated computers and actually even until university I hated them, like I didn't get it, it was just like this box that never did what I wanted it to do and it was just <laughs> annoying um, and so no I never thought about it but then when I got to university I had a laptop that kept breaking and, um, and it was really annoying and I was like right I'm gonna master this and then, <laughs> so I started like learning about computers and trying to and I had to change the hard drive and all this sort of thing and I eventually was like actually this is quite fun it's quite satisfying having this power <laughs> and so um, on your day to day what kind of things do you enjoy doing outside of work um, I really like dancing so I go to salsa classes tango classes swing dance all this sort of thing um, quite, quite girly I like bright colors I like clothes and going shopping and all this sort of thing um, and I'm also quite in interested in the um, in science promotion and like promoting critical thinking and skepticism and all this sort of thing. So if you had advice for young teenage girls who are not sure what they want to do and like you they like a bit of music and they like art and they like dance and humanities but they also like a bit of science what would you say to them with taking their option choices should they leave them open or I think, I think it's really important for schools to try and explain to um, students that you don't need to be one or the other. There are so many jobs out there in the digital creative industries like um, writing video games, doing special effects where you can be both and I, this is something that I definitely missed out on at school. I didn't realise that and I, I kind of wish I had because maybe I would have kind of stuck them together a bit more rather than feeling like I needed to be one or the other. So I think basically the advice is don't be put off by thinking you need to do one or the other. You can join them up and have a. And they're crying out for people who can do both. So it's actually really, you know. So would you say um, working in computer science and physics and science generally that it's good to be female because you can do creative things and be yeah. really smart? Yeah, definitely. I think I think we definitely have skills that are kind of not often. Um, recognized as being as useful as they really should be um you know i think i think definitely people don't th people think coding is all about sitting there and being you know technical and all this sort of thing it's actually about creative thinking problem solving and teamwork and all these things which i think like girls sometimes have an edge on so definitely yeah, yeah by far <laughs> are there lots of girls in your field of work no <laughs> we could do with a lot more um there's uh one girl in the year above me so the intake um, the year before I joined, um, that we haven't taken any girls this year, so really, you know, we need we need more. As you can imagine, Rosie was someone I got on with straight away, and not only does she work for the BBC and do some fantastic stuff for computer science, she also writes a blog called Microchicks. And here it is, here's the Microchicks blog. It's a blog about computing, technology, science, and whatever else they're interested in writing about. It's written by two women who work in computer science, in research and development, and I found it a really interesting read just because of the things they were talking about. It was things that I was interested in, like gadgets and what's the future of technology. I really think you should read it and definitely follow them on Twitter. I had a really great time at MozFest. I got to meet some really great people. And not only that, I was introduced to some software that I'd never seen before. Things like Mozilla Thimble, which allows you to create a website um, just by using HTML code. I also got to use a new product called Popcorn. It allows you to take video from the internet and add annotations to it um, and other information, links to websites, maps. And it turns into this kind of unique interactive experience. And I really want to have a go at Popcorn and see what I can do with it later on. Have a go with some of the Mozilla Webmaker tools. They're free and they are epic. My name's Carrie Ann. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Geek Girl Diaries and I'll see you next time. Remember, I'm only a mouse click away. Oh, oh, oh.